Technique builds in Lies of P provide a distinct playstyle centered on agility. And with the right combination of weapons, armor, and abilities, a Technique build can turn you into a killing machine. Technique is the equivalent of dexterity in other Souls-like games, and if you're used to a dexterity playstyle, then you already know that these builds excel in both speed and power. The reason Technique builds are so great in Lies of P is because you're going to be facing opponents with very fast attacks. So basically, you're simply matching speed for speed, which means you can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any enemy in the game. Welcome back everyone, thank you so much for clicking on the video. Today we are breaking down one of the best technique builds in Lies of P. We cover all things action RPG on this channel, so if you're a fan of this genre like I am, make sure you subscribe to the channel and become a part of the family. If you find this video enjoyable, a thumbs up would be very much appreciated, it helps the channel grow, and it will push this video to more people. Let's get started. The main stats to focus on for this build includes Vitality, Vigor, Capacity, and Technique. Vitality determines your character's HP. Your overall health amount will grow as you increase your Vitality and your Guard regain abilities will also be improved. As your Vigor increases, your Stamina will grow, allowing you to execute more consecutive attacks and just cover more ground in general. A higher Capacity means you can carry a heavier load, including your Legion Arm, amulets, and weapons. And lastly, technique is going to be your main primary damage modifier. The further you increase technique, the more damage your technique scaling weapons will deal. Next, let's talk about the weapons. This build utilizes one of the best weapon combinations in the game for a technique build, and also takes full advantage of one of the best boss weapons in the entire game, the Two Dragon Sword. One of the best starting technique weapons besides the one you choose at the beginning of the game is the Booster Glaive. This weapon can be found inside a chest in Chapter 3. I love the Booster Glaive because the charged heavy allows you to thrust forward towards your enemies and this range advantage is huge when you're going up against tough enemies or even bosses. My main weapon combination consists of the Booster Glaive Handle and the Alive Puppets Axe Blade, one of the best weapon combinations in Lies of P. With this weapon, the speed, range, and power is all here. I switch between this weapon combination and the Two Dragon Sword depending on the combat scenario. You'll generally want to use this weapon combination against tougher enemies with higher HP because it's way easier to stagger them and land a fatal attack in general. This also may not be the best weapon to use against enemies with fast attacks either. Both weapons on this build have their strengths and weaknesses, but the Live Puppets Axe Blade and Booster Glaive Handle will give you that heavy, high damage, destruction feeling that you get from motivity builds, almost making your build feel like a hybrid, right? The second weapon on this build, probably one of the best weapons in the entire game, is the Two Dragon Sword. This powerful boss weapon offers S-tier scaling for technique, giving you the maximum amount of damage possible. To get the Two Dragon Sword, you will need to defeat the Puppet Devouring Green Monster in Chapter 8. The boss's ergo can be given to Alidoro in exchange for the weapon. The Two Dragon Sword comes with two Fable Arts, Link Emergency Dodge and Wind of Swords. Link Emergency Dodge is incredible in situations where you feel overwhelmed or just need to get some distance to open up some room for a powerful attack. The whole sequence consists of a dodge, forward stab, and a powerful 360 spinning attack. Wind of Swords will execute a quick and powerful ranged attack that's good for AoE damage. This sword also comes equipped with its own parry mechanic. Yes, that's right. If you charge the heavy at the right time, you can actually parry attacks. This works on every single enemy and every single boss. It does take some getting used to, but I promise you once you do get used to it, it is one of the most satisfying things in the entire game. The best Legion arm to use on the build is the Puppet Stream. Legion arm. In my personal opinion, it is the best and most versatile arm in the entire game. Being able to close those gaps or even pull enemies towards you is a huge benefit to have, especially against bosses. This is also the first Legion arm you obtain in the game, so I would advise fully upgrading this arm as soon as you can. It works with every build, and in most cases, it's always going to be the best choice. The upgrades include Trace, which allows you to pull enemies towards you, Dodge, which enables dodging after a hit, and lastly, the best upgrade, 
attack link. This is the upgrade that allows you to pull yourself towards your enemies, launch yourself into the air, and unleash a powerful attack. Thanks to my P organs, which we'll go over in just a couple minutes here, I currently have five amulets on this build. The first amulet I'm using is the Iron Wall Amulet, which increases physical damage reduction rate. This is an easy way to increase your survivability, especially when you get to New Game Plus. I'm also using the Puppet Destroyer Amulet, which increases damage inflicted on puppets. This talisman gets swapped for the murderer puppets amulet depending on what type of enemies i'm fighting the patient's amulet is so good to have because it increases stamina recovery speed this amulet can be the difference between you dying or dodging an attack at the last second i also have the arm of god amulet which temporarily increases physical damage upon a successful strike so essentially the more you attack the more damage you will deal this is easily the best amulet on the build and lastly the recharged amulet which restores your HP continuously. The last thing I wanted to do was share my P organ progression with you guys for anyone that wants to see every aspect of the build. Now, I actually unlocked every P organ in phase one. Add Fable Slots 1 increases the maximum number of charged Fable Slots on your build. The more Fable Slots you have, the more Fable Arts you can execute. Link Dodge unlocks the ability to dodge in the middle of a dodge motion. Honestly, without this upgrade, dodging just feels super unresponsive, and you'll just have way more control over over your character if you unlock this upgrade. Increased pulse cells 1 increases the maximum number of pulse cells on the build, and increased staggerable window 1 increases the time of an enemy's staggerable status, making it easier to execute fatal attacks. For phase 2, I unlocked rising dodge, which increases your mobility even further by unlocking the ability to dodge while on the ground. Increased pulse cells 2 increases the maximum number of pulse cells on the build even further, and I also unlocked add amulet slots one. I ended up skipping phase three and just unlocked all of the upgrades in phase four. I unlocked increased special grindstone uses, perfect guard cause stiffness, which breaks the enemy's stance when a perfect guard is successful, add amulet slots two, which lets me hold even more amulets on the build, and lastly, add fable slots two. In phase 5, I further increased the time of an enemy's staggerable window, and then eventually skipped phase 6 to unlock lightweight and add amulet slots 3 in phase 7. Thank you all so much for watching the video. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. If you found this video helpful or enjoyable in any way, shape, or form, a thumbs up would be very much appreciated. Thank you guys so much. It really helps the channel grow, helps the channel get more views, and it'll push the video to people that may need it. If you want to see more guides just like this one for Lies of P and future Souls-like action RPG games, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on those bell notifications so you are notified every time I drop a new video.